within the studio system, the competition for parts was so fierce. Anything that one could conceive of to get an edge, to be better, to do something nasty, uh, was considered fair game. She did whatever was necessary to get what she wanted. She was able to steal one picture from Betty Davis, but Betty had to become pregnant in order for her to do it. Possessed. Possessed is so much fun. The first scene, she's walking like a zombie, calling out the name of David. The men in the white coats take her to the hospital. She's rolled in a gurney to something called the psychopathic department, which is maybe where she belongs. <laughs> Flashback, she's madly in love with Van Heflin, who's a wonderful villain. Darling, I honestly think we better not see each other for a while. Prophet is the original Avenging Fury. Cut back to the hospital, and the doctor is going to find a way of getting her off because she's mentally unhinged. She gets her faithless lover dead, and she gets off the hook. That's what a star does. It's an interesting departure, as they say in the business, for her. She's beginning the sort of crazy lady period. People look at Crawford, and they decide that that is who she was. And she wasn't any of those people. But people need her to be those people. And that, of course, is the definition of why she's a great star. Since she wasn't sure either what she was or who she was, she kind of just played the roles off screen and on for people. Joan Crawford had no illusions. She could kid about herself, as she did in the picture, It's a Great Feeling. What's that for? I do that in all my pictures. By the time she starts having really great success at Warner Brothers, the pressure started giving her more temperament. So if she starts sensing that things aren't totally to her advantage on a film set, she'll start showing up ill or stay home. Jack Warner is not going to brook this kind of behavior. So Crawford starts running into some professional barriers. Crawford found a property called Miss O'Brien, where she would play a self-sacrificing school teacher. Meanwhile, Warner bought Flamingo Road. But Crawford is still determined. Finally, Jack Warner fires off a cable to her saying, oh no, you're going to do Flamingo Road. She was never going to trust any studio chief ever again by that film. She's very, very good at being hard and cheap. What are you doing here? Getting up a parade. You're just in time. She's starting to look a little bit older on the screen and at the same time starting to play significantly younger. Joan was intensely savvy about her career. She knew when to change her act. Her roles were tougher. She reached her extreme in The Damn Don't Cry. <laughs> The Dame Don't Cry, she's associated with gangsters, and this is the first one where she's actually among the criminal element herself. Oh, I know how you feel. You're a nice guy, but the world isn't for nice guys. You gotta kick and punch and belt your way up, because nobody's gonna give you a lift. There's a point where the story of Crawford as a persona begins to consume the image on screen. She said, my image grew more power-oriented, that happens in life if you're a female working in the business. At a certain point, a middle-aged woman gets the boot, no matter how successful she's been at adapting. She's getting the sense that things aren't going to be getting any better. And sure enough, the next thing she's assigned is this woman is dangerous. She wasn't dangerous. She was just dull. This film was a tired rehash. After Crawford does This Woman is Dangerous, she knows there's nothing left for her at Warner's. So she asks for her release. She told me that she was scared. She didn't have anything to fight anymore. She wasn't fighting studio executives. She wasn't fighting other actresses for parts. She had nobody to fight. But she's learned how to reinvent herself. Yet again, she finds a property and makes it happen, an independent film. It's actually a big hit for her, Sudden Fear. Seven years after Mildred Pierce, she has another big comeback. Crawford really showed a lot of guts going to Warner Brothers and reinventing herself, getting more professional praise than she had ever gotten. 
but the effort in the final analysis really took a big toll. She has about five really good years at Warner's, then it's time to move on. To get Crawford's full story, watch my Turner Classic Movies documentary, Joan Crawford, The Ultimate Movie Star, on the DVD of Mildred Pierce from Warner Home Entertainment. And make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.